extra extra as I fix my bra <laughs> love all about it this is your weekly tarot card and oracle card reading for what and who is coming toward you by zodiac sign the timestamps are below and so is the link for the extended reading which talks about who's coming towards you it, it describes your lover your potential lover or um your current lover and what the heck is going on in their head um it, it just talks more about the who you're involved with or or you you have romantic chemistry with this this uh coming week or so whenever you see this it's the right time i don't put timestamps on the videos anymore but you can be guaranteed an extended reading which is below that's the who's coming towards you and here's what is coming towards you where we pick up on general vibes for love and romance for this week ahead for each of the zodiac signs like i said the timestamps are below but what you should know is during all the week aheads there's extended readings for the week aheads and that's the full romantic spread so check that out as well they'll be on the vimeo on demand page where the extended who is coming towards you is uh and let's get right into it let's do this uh hold on hold on oh gotta get okay <laughs> now i'm prepared i got my sheet written down you'll see i'll be taking notes because i like to put the timestamps up as soon as i put the video up so that's for you let's get into it i already have pre-shuffled the cards um i've meditated on them i've sound cleansed the area grounded myself and I am ready to go. You ready? Scorpio, you're up. Let's go. What is coming towards you in terms of romance? In terms of romance, Scorpio. Emotions are running high. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. Duh, like you're a Scorpio. When do they ever run low? It's either high or goodbye. <laughs> like, like, there is no other way. But what this would tell me is something is coming to... Uh, like, you know, it's like right before the climax where you, it's going to come out, it's going to burst. It's about there. It's like, like right there. Emotions are running high. Lots of sensitivity. Lots of emotion. Emotions are... Yeah, that was kind of self-explanatory. But listen... I know that most of us are in quarantine right now, social distancing and all. And mostly, especially if you have a lover, you're probably getting on each other's nerves right about now. <laughs> I'm here to say, like, that makes sense, right? So it could be as benign as that. You're getting on each other's nerves right now. There's just a lot, there's a lot pent up. You can't get out, you can't have a break or relieve yourself the way that you used to, you know, just being with your friends or whatever. A lot is happening, so it's very emotional time. But of course, this could also mean you're about to burst, you're about to explode, or something is about to come out. Like something as in somebody's feelings for you or your feelings for them. In other words, what, wherever you are emotionally, it's about to burst. It's about to like flood the floodgates are about to open so i doubt that any of you is having like the easiest time of this um and usually this precedes a huge release something that's needed to come out for quite some time but for quite some time has been suppressed you can live down there in the underworld for quite some time like kind of fooling yourself <laughs> um but I think this has something to do with some, it's very important. It has something to do with something that's extremely important to you. And it's sensitive. It's maybe even scary for you in terms of, in terms of love, worried, concerned about somebody, um, wanting to, wanting this fear to be over with, wanting this sadness to be over with, want, maybe, want, maybe wanting this anger to be over with. It's a whole lot of loving, but there's an energy that needs to be released. It needs to be let go of. So it could be impeding everything else in your life right now. When a moon is like in your face, there's nowhere else for you to look. This is all you can see right now. So whatever the emotion is, it's all consuming. 
and I'm not sure that it's sexy. I have to say that. Like the, the way that it's feeling, Scorpio, this doesn't feel sexy. This feels scary. It feels worrisome. It feels... It doesn't feel comfortable. It doesn't feel comfortable. Speak the language of love. Loving words have the power to change lives, including your own. You got another full moon in here. Now, I don't know if you're dealing with a Gemini. We will get that. And who is coming towards you? Link below. Um, but this is something needs to come out. And maybe you have had words with somebody that you thought you were aligned with. Somebody that you thought you were on the same page with. Maybe a twin flame, a, a, a divine counterpart. Somebody that... used to be able to talk to you or you thought you could talk to you used to be able to understand but now it's emotions versus logic emotions versus words and they're running high and I feel like this is a point where words are not working anymore they're not doing what they had done at one time you have to this is Gemini energy You have to be able to communicate, but what if what, what you're feeling hasn't been translated into words? But this kind of emotion, it doesn't get translated into words. Somebody just has to be able to read you, to understand you. And Geminis, the Gem I'm not saying you're dealing with Gemini, but the Gemini energy is demanding communication. I think there's something here that it's too much for communication. It's too hard to put this into words. So there's going to be some sort of explosion, some sort of bursting here. And I have to say this, that's what needs to happen. Because something has to be addressed. Could be a third party situation too. I'm just feeling like there's one too many people, one too, one too many energies up in here. Or the third party could be the emotion itself, impeding your ability to be able to speak with each other. So the conflict here is how do we communicate? How? Finding the right words, the right way to talk. And that may not be, I don't think it's physical though. I honestly think this is a block, not being able to talk to somebody not being able to find the words. And that's why it, it's like a blockage. It keeps building up. You're about to explode because you can't seem to find the words that get through to somebody. But definitely something needs to come out. For some of you, I, I honestly don't feel like this is the big one. <laughs> But for some of you, you could have just met somebody that speaks to you, speaks to your heart, speaks to your soul so fluently. You feel like it's it's you. You feel like they're you. Like they can read you. And this is an overwhelming sense of connection. And that's where the emotions, that's where it is. Like the emotions are huge. It's like that's your combined state. The lump in your throat is that combined state of the two of you gelling together and being one. It's your combined emotions. Like you've never had anybody that could speak to your soul this way, that you could talk to this way that you were so in sync with. For some of you. Either way, this, this, this way that you're talking to each other or not being able to talk to each other is impacting the relationship emotionally. You still want to talk. I just think that most of you can't figure out how to. Let's see who, what your partner is going through, essentially, or who's coming towards you, Gemini. That link is in the description box below. I'll see you guys over there. Sagittarius, let's see what energies are coming up for you this week in love and romance, partnership and connection. Bring love into the situation. Have you been hiding this from somebody? Have you been not telling somebody how you feel? Because some sort of truth has to come out. 
some sort of truth about the way that you've been feeling and how much you care. There's, there also could be a circumstance or a situation where everything was logical, everything was pragmatic, could be a work situation, and now all of a sudden there's a sense of passion, all of a sudden being ignited and coming into the circumstance. Maybe even if you're in a long-term relationship, things going a little bit stale, a little bit dry. Not that you stop liking the person. No, 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 no. But that it became a little bit more, you know, like best friendship. As opposed to passionate. And what you're needing, what you're ready to fill up on is some passion. It's Aquarius energy. It's the house of friendship. It's a house of caring about others, taking care of others. So there's caring here. Oh, yeah. Where's the love? Where's the passion? Where's the water? Where's the wetness? That's what we're asking right now. That's the sense. It's not that there's lack of love or companionship or caring. But now, or if you're totally single, this Sagittarius is the energy of, it's about to be love coming into a circumstance. There's a love in this situation. All of a sudden, the juices are gonna to start to flow. You're ready, you're primed. Because you've been lacking it. This friendship, I'm sorry, ship, ain't cutting it anymore. What's your truth? What's your truth? What is the reality of the circumstance? Either way, this is a beautiful energy. I mean, it really is. It's not like there's emptiness here. There's like ready to be filled with more than just friendship. Receive with love and appreciation. Three plus seven. You're working on something because that's the energy. Three plus four. That's the energy of seven, which means you're working on something. Gracious acceptance is a way to show love. That's really interesting, Sagittarius, that sometimes we don't understand it. We think about, you give love, right? But love is a two-way street. It's balance. It's the yin and yang. It's the whole circle, not just the yin or the yang. It's the whole circle. That's what love is, the whole circle. So you show love. A great way to show love is to receive love, to take it. Remember, like primed to be filled? It's like somebody needs to give you something. They need to be allowed to share who they are with you. And in that allowance is how you open up to either something more happening, something blossoming, somebody making an offer now that like, like leveling up from going from friends to something more or going from lovers who have become friends to more to or back to like bring it, bring in the love back, bring in the sexy back. But there's definitely an offer being made to you. And I don't feel like there's nothing here. That's what I'm saying, Sagittarius. This is an energy of... You already know this person. Even if you're not in a relationship with this person, this is an offer of friendship becoming more. Somebody making an offer to you and sharing their truth with you. So maybe that they've been holding on to this for a little while. Okay. And I don't know if you're going to feel completely comfortable with it at first. Okay. If this is your husband or wife, you're, you know, but at the same time, if that's the circumstance or situation, like the situation that you're in, Sagittarius, um, there will still be awkwardness. There'll be like, uh, 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 you know, because we get into these ruts. Like I said, there's not an em like the, the energy here, there's not an emptiness of feeling, of caring about somebody. There's just a need to up the passion and the wetness, the sensuality, if you will. Right? So even if you've been married for 20 years and you're very happy with each other, there's a rut that has been formed. And there's a little bit of, we got to level, we got to step this up. We gotta, we gotta bring something more into this situation. Cause we've been running a little bit dry. Ugh. So there's a little bit of awkwardness here of, 
uh, you know, listen, it's okay to fall off the bike when you first take off the training wheels. You know, it's, it's like, who cares? Be awkward, stumble, but please take the chance. Please open yourself up. This is a new moon energy telling me you need to be receptive to somebody else's truth. Be open to their truth. Be open to their offer. Now, what are they feeling? What are they thinking? What do they want? Well, we know what they want. They want you. But like what's going on up here? That is in the who is coming towards you. Please do click that link below. And we'll go deeper into who they are, their sign, what they're thinking, what they're going through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll see you over there. Hi, Sag. Capricorn. I know you want to know. I can almost feel it in you. You're curious about it. Where is the love or what's going on? Well, let's see. Adjustments are required. Now, this is waning. A waning moon. So something is fading. So this may be adjusting to the fact that the love is dying. The love is fading. Or adjusting to the fact that it is going to wane. It's going to get worse before it gets better. Or that you get to see them less and less and less. Simply, it could be that. Which I say simply because that's not the relationship ending, but it is an issue, isn't it? It's problematic. This is something lessening, something slacking off, whether it be the time that you spend with them or if you're single, how many people you're dating. Like, of course, duh. Are any of us dating right now? You're a tangible person. You're, a, you're visceral. You don't, you don't do well with those Skype chats things. You know, maybe, maybe online at first to like, you know, meet people, but no, you, you need to eye contact somebody and that's impossible with six foot distancing and social distancing and stuff. So that that's, you can feel this romanticness like waning and fading. And I think that you're taking it personally. It's, it's almost another slight against you because I don't know, like, could you be laid off anymore? Could you like lose work prospects or orders aren't coming in? Like there's so much in this tangible sharing goods and material things world that you are feeling cut off from now that this one is, I think a little like heavier than it would be normally, but I think it's heavy for you anyway, because you always take it personally. Like it's something that you're doing or that you can fix because you always think you can fix everything. This could just be like, I'm saying timing and have nothing to do with you. It's just that you love having something to do and you love thinking you can fix it because that gives you something to do. So how do we deal with this circumstance? I mean, you're going to deal with it the way that you deal with it. But what I would say is the truth is always the best way. And the truth is this, this timing right now is off. There's something here that's just, it's slowing down. You're not imagining things. The momentum is waning. Adjustments are required. In other words, in other words, maybe you can't see your boo as much Capricorn because they're a fucking nurse. They gotta, they gotta work 70 hour weeks. Adjustments are required doesn't mean your relationship is over. It just means, okay, we gotta adjust. Because when they're home, they gotta like, like, in like biohazard level four, shower themselves, and then all they want to do is sleep. That's the adjustments, and that's where you can put yourself to work. Readjusting or setting a new norm, creating a sense of a new norm so that you can have comfort from it too. Because it doesn't mean that this relationship is over, but it does mean some serious adjustments have to be made in terms of your expectations from your partner. Now, what are your, what's your partner going through? That's in the link below. Who is coming towards you? We will totally go into discussing that. But right now, what do you need to know? Start planning on what to do to adjust to their waning. Not this. Okay. If it's their emotions that are waning, that's one thing. But if it's their energy, because like I said, they're in a high pressure job right now or you know, tolerance for each, even for each other. We could have like a, you could, there could be tolerance issues, right? 
we, this is, let's make a plan. How do we adjust to these new circumstances that neither of us can be in control of and neither of us could have predicted? That's the new job. Design the new norm. Listen with your heart. You are listening but need to hear with a loving heart. So be open and be loving. I know you want to fix this, but it may not be need, it may not be them that needs to be fixed. It may just be how much you expect from them, which is why you listen with an open heart. I can't give this to you right now. You know, I, I, I don't take it personally, but I need to sleep. Listen with your heart, like open up, be empathetic. Like wh what are they going through? Like, do they have a legitimate reason to ask you for these? I mean, like, yeah, I mean, like, can you understand why? Be open your heart and be empathetic because this does tend to lend itself more to the side of, they still love you, but they're not as accessible for you anymore because of circumstances or situations that are happening inside of them. What's happening inside of them? Like I said, we'll get into it. That's the link below. But there is something going on with your partner or with you that you need empathy here. And to just adjust. Why? Because we don't really want to break, do we? We don't want to dissipate and go away. We don't want to let this love fade. But if we have to expect less, if we have to um, change our dynamics right now, that will show our partner how much we love them. Opening our hearts to, you know, their needs right now. I talk about this a lot on my dailies. What, we, what I learned in yoga, which was the most profound lesson. Your body is not the body that it was yesterday. It's not the body that it was 20 years ago. You have to be in the right here, right now, in your body right now. What does it need today? Sometimes it can put its leg behind its neck. Sometimes the leg is too tired to even bend. You know, it's just, what do you need right now? That's what this is, empathy. Opening your heart and hearing with your heart. Of what's really being said, what's really going on. Now, for some of you, that may mean somebody's trying to pull away from you. The relationship is over. And that's not what you want to hear because you want to fix it. But simultaneously, like, hear, hear what they're saying to you. Hear it. Because their emotions are not going to change. They're just going to wane and wane till there's nothing left. And then for others, it's not that. It's just that I'm tired. I need, I need to sleep right now. I, I, I'm so exhausted or I'm so scared. I feel like all of those things. It's like, it may not be about you at all or about your relationship, but there is something that is happening on the other side that is requiring an easement. Some sort of adjustment that you can do lovingly or that you may need be, to be done lovingly just for the time being. Remember, moons change every 2.5 days. Moons change every day. So this is a sense of maybe let it wane, knowing that it will come back to fullness again. This is just a sense of what is going on today and how can I open my heart to accept it and be understanding and empathetic? So who is coming towards you? What are they going through? This is, this is really information that you actually um, would help out a lot for you guys. So Capricorn, that link to the extended is below. I'll see you over there. Pisces. No, I pop, I apologize. This is not Pisces, this is Aquarius. I read one down and I apologize. Understand that that's not gonna affect the cards because they've already been meditated on Aquarius. They've already been meditated on and in, intentionally selected for Aquarius. I just, I read the wrong line. So this is definitely the reading for Aquarius. Love and romance for Aquarius. You're very close to achieving your goal, but it came out in reverse. So that means that you feel like you're at the bottom of a well, looking up at the light. 
and it seems like the impossible journey. How am I ever going to climb up? How am I ever going to get out of this? How am I ever? It, you could actually be feeling it. Like, how am I? I'm stuck here. I'm stuck in this relationship. I'm stuck in this situation. Or I'm stuck isolated way down here. And there's my light up ahead. How do I get to them? How? How do I reach them? How? This seems like such an impossible feat. It seems so far away. At this point, they feel far away from you. Emotionally, because this is a moon card. Maybe, but maybe in terms of distance. However, this moon looks awful close, doesn't it? There's a lot of emotions here. There's a lot of passion. This is almost a full moon. So if any more emotions get added to this pot, Aquarius, you're about to explode. And then you won't need to worry about closeness because you'll flood all over them. This is, it all wants to come out, but it feels so unattainable. And maybe that's what's building and maybe the buildup needs to happen because the explosion is what's required, what's necessary. See, this card upright is, you're there. And always, listen, it's always darkest right before the dawn, right? It's always that sense of that's, that's the time right before you're um, going to achieve, right before you're about to accomplish your dreams is always the most dangerous time because it's always a time when vision gets blurry and you think you're the farthest away. So maybe that's what it is. It's that optical illusion. You feel so far away from something you could reach out and touch. It's almost here. It's almost here. Because I really don't take the moon cards in reverse. But the feeling is, I'm never going to get there. If you've been wanting to be in a relationship and nobody has interested you, and I know it takes a lot to really turn an Aquarius's head. Or have them, let's put it this way, have them feel safe enough to share their emotions with you. Or even be emotional about you. Aquarians are happy single. You know, they're not thinking about, woe is me, I need someone. They like to stay with somebody once they have them. They're a fixed sign. All fixed signs like to be long-term. You guys know that. You're you. But this is feeling like it's so far away. It's never going to happen. Maybe because I've waited so long or this person seems so distant, like they don't even notice me. But that's not the truth. The truth is it's closer than you realize. That partnership that you wanted, maybe even their attention or their emotions for you. It's closer than you, you have any idea of. So Aquarius, this becomes an activity of faith. A challenge to your faith and your ability to be faithful. Slow down, pause, and allow things to unfold. I mean, this is Piscean energy. This is dreamy energy, Neptunian energy, illusion. That's like a mystery, not being able to see. You're not going to get the, the clear answers that you want. I know you want the clear answers. I know you like, everybody thinks, you know, Aquarius, yeah, loopy in the head. Not, not flighty, but like out there with their thoughts. But that's it. It's free-floating thought. It's not mystery. It's not murkiness. It's not fog. You can't stand this crap. You want to be able to talk and articulate and have ideas, but this isn't about ideas. This is about intuition. This is about uh, psyche. And this is not your realm, which is why you feel so far away. You're not far away. This has been happening slowly. Let it continue to happen slowly. Let it continue to unfold. I don't think at this point you could do anything but just let go. Like stop, like say you're at the bottom of that well and you're caught. There's nothing you can do but wait for the next rainstorm so the water level rises and takes you with it. 
so that you get to where you need to go to get out. So this is a sense of as hard as it is, wait. I be dreaming of you tonight. This is, it's almost, I don't know if you've been dreaming about somebody. I don't know if you've been connecting psychically in dreams. Maybe you don't have a lot of dreams, but there's been a lot of dreaminess going on. I think that's because Pisces is still in Neptune. I think. I gotta check on that. There's a lot of dreams going on. So if you've been having more dreams, Pisces, I mean, I keep saying Pisces. I don't know if you're dealing with a Pisces. That's interesting because there's a lot of Piscean energy all over this reading. Maybe too much. Maybe too much for your liking. Clearly your comfort level is not there right now. But maybe that's the most fascinating thing for you. Is that this is not your comfort level. And there's nothing so enticing to an Aquarian but intrigue. And intrigue is going to be present when you are in a realm where you have no idea about. Like it is just the polar opposite from you. But what? What, what is, what is, ha like, I know there's something about to burst. There's something about to just bam. And you are closer than you realize. It's just <laughs> letting the current take you there. All right. Who are they? Who is, who is, is, Tickling your psyche, playing with you in your dream world. Who is this person? Well, who is coming towards you or what is your significant other feeling or going through? That's in the link below, Aquarius. I'll see you in the extended. Pisces, are you messing with an Aquarius? I'm just asking. Because you were all over there reading to the point where I couldn't stop saying Pisces. Just saying. Pisces, what are you up to? Let's see. Have faith in your dreams. Oh. <laughs> but who are you dreaming of? This is very springtime energy. Very much so. And considering you guys are the end of winter, and Aries sort of ushers in the spring. There's a sense of needing that newness, that life, that energy, that, that coming, that becoming, that, oh my God, it's happening. Hopefulness, joy, prosperity, abundance, you name it, it's coming. Newness, a new beginning. A new, be what's new in your life? What is this, what is this flowery gardenias, wisteria, willow tree by the lake? What is this energy? You are lost in your love affair dreams. Someone has inspired you. Someone has whooshed your whistle, tantalized you. And if you're dealing with Aquarius, go back there and listen. Because somebody is like, Tickling their psyche in their dreams. It may be you. Guilty party. But this is definitely whoever you're dreaming of. This, these dreams being almost all consuming. And you, who, you, you're happy there. This is also an energy of, yes, you working very, very hard and really making your dreams, dreams come true. And that actually pushing and filling your love life, like making you feel so good. Maybe for the first time in your life, you feeling good enough for the person that you're with. Because your dreams are actually becoming tangible and now you feel like, hey, listen, I told you I was good enough all along. Thank you for all your love and thank you for all your support. But now it's like, yes, you know, you were right to believe in me. So it's like making you happy. It's filling you up. You being productive towards your own dreams is making you feel like a fuller, more complete partner. So it's, it's, it's watering your love affair. It's watering your potential for a new soulmate. It's, it's watering. It's, it's nurturing. 
your ability to love because you feel so darn good and productive about you, just about you. But listen, it's, it's loving us that starts our love affair. If we don't have a love affair with this, there's no way we can reach out to you or them, him, her. So this is, was your first step in that beautiful, yes, I feel love. I feel beauty. I feel it all around me. I'm so in love. The one thing about this is you may be floating, floating so high you don't realize it feels like now you're unattainable to somebody. Floating so high and feeling so good, just soaring away to the moon. And nobody can, you know, to hold you down, but feeling like maybe they're just watching me go. Not knowing that in your heart, you take them with you. They're, you're still with them. Well, you're still very much ready for love, but it, it seems like you're just disappearing into this dream come true. That could be something that we have to watch out for. Romance. Lavish the one you love with personal attention and affection. There you go. This is you underneath the one. I, I have to say this. The mermaid and the sailor, the water sign and the air sign. I don't know if you're dealing with an air sign, but this Pisces is a sense of you dealing with somebody that is not the water element, but really wrapping them up in your dream taking them into your world, consuming them, and like literally dissolving into each other. Becoming one, two becoming one. You could be getting married, getting engaged. You could have found the love of your life. You have to understand one thing though, Pisces. You feel very comfortable in this dream world because for you it's not the land of make-believe for you it's the land of infinite possibility for you it's the beginning of everything but for other people it seems like what the fuck are you talking about? you know <laughs> like and that's the one thing that you have to be hold on my pu hold on my puppies so yes oh my god please oh my god i love it i love that you're in love and you can feel everything about your partner, but how are they feeling? I know that I know that you feel every part of them, which gives you comfort, but what are they feeling? Like take a second to acknowledge that. And that could be the most romantic thing you could do this week. To acknowledge that they may not be as secure as you. They might not feel as, as you. This is something new. This could be something very new for them. So don't just take comfort in feeling them. Feel what they're feeling, please. Because that's, that's the most giving, empathetic thing you could do. This is, a, this is for you, la vie en rose, the world of dreams, lost in dreams and emotions. But now it's time to think, okay, I want my lover with me everywhere I go, literally finding the one, the person. I've been feeling this for you guys for a while, at least the past couple of readings, has been somebody amazing coming into your life. And I'm so happy for you. How about them? Let's get a little glimpse into what they're feeling. It could help you. It could help you. Who is coming towards you? Because clearly you're ready for romance. Maybe you're already dreaming about somebody. If you're single, you're already dreaming about the person that you, you're, you're, you're dreaming about them so much. You feel like you are with them. And I'm telling you right now, you're dreaming about them so much. You're showing up in their dreams. Did you know that? Maybe not because you're not doing it intentionally. This is coming from a place of pure joy for you. And now be conscious of it. Be conscious of it because there is a visceral effect on the other side. Let's go see what that is. The link is below. I'll see you guys over there. Aries, let's see what's up. Let's see what's up. 
what is going on in love and romance for you? And then who is coming towards you? That link is below, just so you know. The end of a tough cycle approaches full moon in Capricorn. Boom, hitting it hard, tangible. When it's in Capricorn, this is tangible. This is not just thinking or dreaming or psychically connecting. This is tangible, 3D, this is happening. So what is it, Aries? Have you been dealing with a relationship that just isn't working? Because this means tough. This means some sort of pushback, hard, almost like hitting your head against the wall over and over again. You might be making the breakthrough. You might finally have cracked that thick skull that has been getting in the way of you and your happiness. Finally gotten, gotten through. Hold on. Finally cracked through. Thick skull. Maybe somebody finally cracked, broke through to you. <clears throat> Maybe you finally broke up with that person. Like that relationship that has been holding on and neither of you could let go, wanted to let go, was prepared to let go, and boosh, it's done. It could be the quarantine itself that just broke you, broke you up. Like, no, I can't. I, now that I got to live with you full time, there's no way I can deal with this. No way. It's like the, the two by four that broke the camel's back, you know, because somebody jacked him up with it. Like that kind of, like, I can't take that. The only thing that made it doable was the fact that you spent 50 hours a week away from each other. And now that you have to actually be with them, there's no way. Whatever this tough energy was, it's, it's, it's over. It's a breakthrough. It's being held accountable because this is Capricorn energy. This is, this is timing. This is Saturn. This is, this is judgment. What's working, what's not. Let's get rid of what isn't. And it having an effect, definitely. Coming out in the 3D. This is just moving out, switching houses, maybe even deciding to get a divorce. This could also be finally making a breakthrough, finally calling that person, finally hearing from them. Whatever it was that was straining you, whatever side you were on, doesn't matter. What matters is this, it's done. It's over. Have you been single for a long time? Not for much longer. And I don't think that you would have even been able to predict this or expect it. Because if you go and watch last week's reading, you'll see that something is coming. Something's up. It could also be in your extended from last week too. Go check it out. Go check it out. Last week's extended, not extended romantic tarot, but extended Aries reading. There is something that is like, you didn't even expect it to go very far. And then how is something happening? What? Yeah. Kind of creeps up on you. It's like what you've always wanted is creeping up on you. Even if what you've always wanted is finally to get released from this relationship that just was not moving anywhere. What is it that you really want? Because that's about to, it's about to come to you. The union of hearts, a love connection defies explanation. They're with you. So now this card tells me you're coming together. You're unifying. Two of cups energy. This is this card is very much the two of cups for me in this deck because it's two people that had to grow up before they could grow together. And you're finally making the breakthrough. It's like, I finally got through to this stubborn ass. I finally broke through. It's like, finally, we're married. Finally, the engagement. Finally, we're moving in. Finally, he admits, she admits, I'm the one for them. Duh, like I was going to give up. Have you read the Aries description? Not a chance. I don't give up till I win. Because winning is the only option. Like, you know, it's like, if this was the person that you wanted, you just won. And if you don't have a person because you're totally single, well, guess what? I'm telling you, you are being prepared for somebody because that's what two of cups energy really is, is, is 
two mature people, could be friends, could be a friendship that's, oh, I don't know, starts in a hookup, a random freaking hookup, and then all of a sudden it becomes suddenly more. Like, I would have never looked at this person had it, been, had it not been for what happens in quarantine stays in quarantine. And it's, since I already did it with you once and we both test negative, let's keep doing it because at least we know we're safe. And then something comes from it, kind of. Like, that kind of energy of, like, you had to get to this place in your life and they had to get to the place in theirs for you to start growing together. That's two of cups energy. And it's my favorite card in the deck. Finally making a breakthrough, maybe in love itself, because you're just getting a partner. I know. See, this is what happens when you turn 42. I just like, what is that? What is that? Disgusting. I know. I know. Tell me if you feel it. Leave the comments below. Because I'd love, I'd love to shoot the shit. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. I was so toned at one point. Anyway, I know you'll understand. You're Aries. You love to be toned. Doesn't matter though. Because you can jiggle, have a hello, Mary, all you want. This is an energy of just finally connection. So you either made a breakthrough in love itself. Like, so wow. How did I find myself in a relationship? Like, when did this start to happen? Or you made a breakthrough in your partnership by getting through to somebody, making a huge breakthrough, or the two of you made a breakthrough together because you've been pounding away at something. Um, it wasn't a problem in your relationship. It was a problem external to the both of you, and you're finally making progress in that, in that direction. Finally, because it's been going on for a long time. This is the ram. This is, oh, not the ram. This is the seagoat. This motherfucker never gives up. This is Capricorn. He doesn't even know how to give up. So this is finally, that's like, oh, Jesus, I finally, I finally found someone. I finally got their attention. We're finally getting married. Or we finally are able to buy that house. Or we finally won that lawsuit and got those people off our backs. Or something that was really impeding your ability to feel complete. It's over. It's, it's dissipating. Now, who are they? What are they going through? What are they feeling? Like, Tell me more about them. Okay, I will. It's in the extended. I'll see you over there. Taurus. What's up with you? Let's see. Love and romance, Taurus. What's going on? Let's see. The answers you need are coming. Full moon in Gemini. Twins. Not understanding, not knowing being uncertain, being unsure, you're waiting to hear from somebody. You're waiting for them to answer your questions, talk to you, communicate with you. You're waiting to see how they feel about you. Gemini is one-on-one -on -one communication. It's not being an orator, talking in front of everybody. It's one-on-one -on -one communication. So you're waiting to hear from somebody. Maybe you're looking, checking your texts every single day. But this is soulmate energy. This is twin energy. I don't know, maybe you are a twin. And maybe it's exacerbating the situation that you see people around you, your friends, your siblings around you, getting into the relationships, and you're like, why not me? How about me? What's happening with me? Or waiting for that. There's some sense of waiting to understand, waiting for information to come to you. Because honestly, you don't know where to, like, you don't, you don't know what to ask yourself or where to begin. However, listen to me very carefully. This, this card says the answers you need are coming. There's one prerequisite. You had to have asked the questions. So if you didn't ask the questions, Taurus, you're not going to get the answers. So you better get on asking those questions. In other words, say something. Say something and you'll get an answer. Say something, I'm giving up on you. You need to just say something. You don't have to tell them something. Ask. 
How you doing? Hi, how are you? How, what, what, what have you been up to? Do you want to marry me? <laughs> you know, the question had to be asked for the answer to come. If you have asked the question, what was that question you asked, Doris? Why don't you pick up shit around here? Why am I the only one doing the dishes? Okay, that's legit, man. That's a question. You're going to get the answers. The communications are coming. And I think it's probably been irritating you a little bit that they didn't have a good answer for you. They didn't have, like, you weren't hearing anything. If you haven't been hearing anything, that has been really grinding on you, Taurus. Beyond upsetting to you. Because you work in the tangible. You don't work in the suggestive. You don't work in the subjective. You work in the tangible. As long as it's in the 3D, you got it. But see, this is Gemini energy, which means it's all still ideas and like, you know, concepts. And you're like, concepts? I need to know. Because I need to know which way to, like, I, I need tangible. So if you put those needs out there and you've said those things, you've asked those questions, those that information is coming back to you. You're about to know. You're about to understand. You're about to learn. You could hear it in a DM, you could hear it from a friend, from somebody that you know, or you could hear it directly from that person's mouth, but you're about to get that communication. And I feel like it's like one-on-one -on -one communication from your person or an understanding of what's impeding my ability to find my person. Maybe you're in counseling right now, trying to understand the duality that is sometimes you stubborn, but also needing love, you know, um, adoring money, like so focused on money but at the same time, loving to be home. Loving nothing better than to be able to build a great home and a secure home with that money. So you can be contradiction. And so maybe that's just understanding you and th those communications, being able to talk to somebody about it. Third party objective, you know, like, like, like that objective observer that is able to, the wonderful thing about Gemini energy is this communication will make sense because Gemini energy can always put something in a way that makes sense. That's why they're such great, they're such effective communicators. Because they know what you need to hear to understand. And so, I'm not saying you're dealing with a Gemini. Who are you dealing with? We'll find that out. That's in the link below. Please do join me. But what this means, this energy means, is you're, you're about to hear what you need to hear. To get the peace of mind that you've been looking for. Now, you have two cards that came up in addition. This is... Something has shaken your foundation. Consider your foundation. Look at how committed you are to love. Not knowing, not understanding. Questioning your level of commitment. Questioning your own stability. And the timing, timing. This is divine timing. Be in the present and dream of the future. In other words, figuring out, getting information now. Or, or yeah message or word coming in now that's going to help you build a solid foundation because right now it's got all kinds of cracks in it right now you're not certain at all but something happening everything clicking into place so that you are able to understand and realize where you're headed what what the right next step is going to be for this love of yours, for your home, for your family. And I think this means a change. Not necessarily divorce if you're married, I don't know. But I think this means a change in the dynamic of your household. Right? It's like, it's like I don't want things to be that they have been. You know, maybe I want, I'm the wife, but I want to go to work full time. Because something about this is bothering me and bugging me. And it's about high tide we dealt with it. And this is a change. This is like almost like the world card. This is the change. A, a, a big change in somebody's life. 
And I'm not feeling divorce, though it could be. It could be serving people papers or getting papers served to you. Because it's does it's gonna hit you at home. It's it's something about but it's something about you investigating what you really need right now. And being able maybe to communicate that to somebody else or somebody communicating to you what they need. And once you understand, once that's out, now you can deal with the problem. Now, you, now you're working in the tangible. But up until now, it's just been shaken and, and, and you couldn't do anything about it. I'm saying, Taurus, that you will soon be able to do something about it because your information, you're going to be able to either share the information that you, they need or they're going to be able to share it with you. You'll know. You'll know what the next step is. It's coming up in the next couple of days. Who are you dealing with? And what are they going through? Like, what are they feeling? And what are they thinking? Like I said, let's find out. You may be dealing with a Gemini. I don't know. That link is below. I'll see you guys over there. Gemini, this is all about your love life. <laughs> let's see. What are the romantic implications? Don't let your past hold you back. South node. So every time I get this card, what does south node mean? Go see, what, what is your, where is your south node, guys? Gemini, find out your south node. You can go to astrologycafe.com, Google free natal chart. You're gonna need the date, place, and time of birth. Go on, plug it in. Find out what your south node is. Find out what side. South node isn't a, like a planet. It's just a position. It's a mathematical coordinate that ends up landing in one of the zodiac signs, right? And what it does is tell you that whatever zodiac sign it's in is it tells you all, a lot about your past life and where you're coming from. You know, and because it was, there was a lot about your past life there, you've already learned it. And that's why this is the easy stuff for you. This is the stuff that in your life, it's just like, say your south node is in cancer, right? Like say it's in cancer. You may kind of be a homebody or um, tend to rely on your family a lot or the security of your family a lot. It's your safe place. It's the place where you don't have to try or think. It's a pitfall. It's a pitfall because it doesn't challenge you. There's no challenge here. This is what's gonna hold you back. Are you hooking up with an ex? I too, did you make those calls? Did you DM somebody during the quarantine? I don't judge you, man. You know what I'm saying? Do what you gotta do. But this is a, sex, a sense of falling back into something because it was easy and not because it was inspiring or progressive or the direction you were going. It could be like, you know, hooking up with your ex or some, something like that. Or even being tempted to sort of hook up with them. Because you know what's going to happen with them. It's a safe place and there's something agitating you. This is what happens when we're agitated. Is we fall back into those things or those places that make things easy for us. We're trying to avoid the challenges because we don't feel up to them. What don't you feel up to? What are you, what are you not facing? Because that's what you need to be able to face to accept about who you are and to guide yourself toward your north node. Find your south node, find your north node and find the place where you need to aim toward. I know that's difficult for me. It's supposed to be. It's my challenge. What are you trying to avoid right now, Gemini? Who are you trying to avoid? What love are you trying to avoid because it scares you? Because this is you falling back, falling backward. Emotionally, either going back with an ex or going backward 
away from somebody you're with now because backing away because you're scared because it, this is this is what you do you back down you run away things get complicated things get challenging things get um heavy you're out of there but what are you leaving behind because this is you falling back on the easy stuff for you and that's never something that helps to push your life forward if you go with your south node, you're literally falling back. This is never a good thing. Could be temporary. What happens in quarantine stays in quarantine. But this also is, like I said, a pitfall. So if you hook up with that ex, it could mess up the things that you're trying to do with somebody else, like your future. Whoever you're trying to get to know. And then there's this duality and Gemini's always cheating. And that's, it's just be clear, be crystal clear and make up your mind and know that these pitfalls are waiting for you this week. These temptations are waiting for you. You can't avoid them just by don't pick up the phone or don't make the call. Don't send the text. Or if you really care about somebody, you're just afraid to care about them before you send the text, work through it, work through what, what's going on here. Because you want to get to a place where you don't have to be scared anymore. And research your North Node because it could help you. Rest and relaxation. Two cards have come out for you. So you're trying to take a break. Four plus two. Taking a break for love. You know somebody's got your back. You feel very safe with this person. Or you feel very protected. Or needing to, maybe you're going back home. You know, just going to a place where you feel unconditional love and safety. Love endures. This is father figure energy. Maybe you're dealing with a maybe maybe you're dealing with daddy issues, and all of this just became too much for you because there was stuff that you never dealt with with your father. Or maybe this is going back home to daddy's house because he's going to protect you, and you know that you could be safe there, and because you just need a second, you need a freaking break. Because things got too heavy for you. And, and Gemini, your air sign, your air of all airs, you can't be too heavy. It's just not, it's not a situation that you can tolerate. You've got, you've got to like purge it like it's an illness. So love endures. It could, a matter of fact, it could make you feel sick. You could be feeling very ill right now. And it's all driven by emotions. Love endures. Love does not give up or lose faith. Love is hopeful and withstands every situation. Four plus three, seven, the energy of creation, of something is still working. Somebody still cares about you. Somebody still loves you. Somebody still wants to make things work with you. Or you still want to make things work with somebody, but you need a break. Like Ross and Rachel. You, you need a second. You need a break. Or they need a break from you and it's frustrating you. But I feel like if this is more, you know, you're putting a lot on the person because you're trying to separate yourself from them, but you're trying to separate yourself from them so that in some ways you can stay with them. Because right now you just need to work through some stuff. This isn't about a third party situation. This is about you getting your head on straight. Things got too heavy and you're retreating. Cancerians do this too, but in a different way. Things get too heavy, they retreat into their shell. They need, to, they, they need to be on lockdown. You guys, you hightail it out of there. Like the person never existed and never cared. The problem is, a couple years later, a couple months later, whoosh, it hit you. The f did I just do? Because this was a loving, caring person. Now, with the way this card reads is they will have patience with you. They still love you. They still want to be with you. They will, they will wait for you. And that's fine. As long as you're working on yourself or they're working on them. This is all vice versa. You could reverse the energies. You could be dealing with somebody who's doing this to you. Um, um, yeah, you could be dealing with somebody who's, who's doing this to you. But this is a sense of there is still love here. Love endures. And it can, it, this, this is, it can face stormy weather. 
Maybe this is love enduring. That's, that's the problem is you don't want to face stormy weather. You want to sleep through it or they want to sleep through it. But the problem is when you really love each other and you're really together, you don't sleep through it. You, you fight through it. Now, what are they going through? What's their mindset? What do they think? It seems like they want to be with you. They want to stand up for your honor, protect you, defend you, love you. Are you going to go back to them? And if not, don't they deserve better? Don't they deserve to know? Or don't you deserve to know? And they can make up their damn minds. Because there's definitely one party here that wants this love to continue. And one party here that basically needs to escape from it. And whoever needs to escape from it really needs to tell the other one what the heck is going on and be honest. So let's see what's in their mind. Like what's going to happen? What are they thinking? That link is in the description box below. I will see you on the extended. Bye, Gemini. Cancer. This is all about your love life. So what's up with it? What's going on? Let's see. What's up with them? What's going on with them? Let's see. That's in the link below. Cancer. Ooh, okay. Uh, I know, listen, I try to not take it personally every single week, but I can't help it. I'm a Cancerian and a Cancerian moon. And I'm going to tell you right now, moon sign, paramount for love. Like the sun sign, it don't tell you shit. Okay, no, it tells you stuff. It absolutely does. But like moon sign, big time for love, right? And I'm a Cancer there too. So, hmm. A new romantic cycle begins. <laughs> I know. Calm the fuck down. But this is a sense of balance. Either being restored in your current partnership, like somebody finally being able to pull weight, the two of you finally being able to get on the same page, balance out the scales, find a compromise, find that. See, there's three elements here. The yin, the yang, and the combined. The balance is, a, is an entity of itself. You found it. This is balance being restored into the heart space, into the love arena, into your relationship. So if you're in a relationship right now that's been a little bit rocky, this could be love being restored, like balance being restored, a fresh start. This could also mean if this is not the right person for you. That relationship is over. And a new one is about to begin. Because this does say a new romantic cycle begins. So this is either with the same person you're with or with somebody new. Either way, it's new. And it's beautiful because Libra rules the house of partnership. It is love itself because it's ruled by Venus. It's about partnership. It's about compromise. It's about being equals. This is, a, this is true freaking love. Finally, finally stabilizing in our lives. Love. Now, could you be dealing with a Libra? You very well could be. You very well could be. Are you? I don't know. That link is below. Who's coming towards you? We'll figure it out. But whoever it is, they're an equal. Or they're willing to pull the, their own weight. They're willing to give as much as you do, which means what, Cancer? Cancer? You have to learn to receive. You can't just give, 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 give. So many times we're all about giving. Why? To do what we're most afraid of, which is leave ourselves vulnerable for receiving. Because then we have to depend on somebody else. And we hate that shit. As all cardinal signs do, except maybe Libra. <laughs> but that's not true either. Because Libra finds it hard to depend on other people too. That's why they're always trying to be the ultimate diplomat. And trying to compromise so much. Because they just want to like the problem to solve. Because they lack faith that people will be able to solve it for themselves. Cardinal signs. We're always trying to fix stuff. We're always trying to like make it happen. This 
is about balance, about give and take. So meeting somebody or being with somebody that is your true equal, you know, that, that is going to give as much as you. And it's new. So say you're in a 50 year marriage and there's no way you're getting divorced. You're not, you're not getting divorced, right? This is, oh, like that love returning, a balance, a stability, maybe it, be, being able to see them more. Finally, maybe they're retiring and you, you can spend more time together. This is, this is a new cycle beginning. It doesn't have to be with a new person, so don't freak out. But it's a new cycle with this person. It's a new step in your relationship and it's a loving one. It's not a crappy one. It's a good one. This is like a, a level up or a strengthening of. Because this is really the two of you prioritizing each other. The give and the take. Love. Now, for those single Cancerians out there, this is great news because, yeah, partnership is coming. Do you see the new moon? This is your, you're about to be, you're, you're primed. You've prepared yourself. You're ready to receive. Oh, you're going to receive it. It's coming. When, Michelle, when? Okay, stop. Stop. Calm down. When? It's coming. Soon. I hate that question when, because every time somebody asks me that question, the answer is always when you stop asking when. Because if you're sitting there waiting for it, it's not going to want to come, right? The watched pot doesn't boil. Of course the pot will boil, man, of course. But it's just like, it's going to feel, I could tell you a week and you're going to swear it's a year because you sat there all week. Let it go. Please trust the universe. It's a guarantee. That's all you should need to know. You shouldn't need a time stamp. You shouldn't need a guarantee. You shouldn't need a map. You shouldn't need somebody to hold your hand. You should just trust. Know it. Oh, oh there you go. <laughs> Get ready. Clear out the room in the closet. Start sleeping on your favorite side of the bed. Like, like, get ready, get prepared. It's coming. That's all you need to do is show the universe you absolutely know. You told me it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's going to get ready. It's coming. The universe loves your faith. That's like candy for the universe. That's the way for you to treat, give the universe a treat. Cupcakes and candy. Okay? That's like the fresh morning cup of coffee. For the universe. It's like, oh, they have faith in me? <gasps> you know? Like that's... Have faith. So, act as if your partner is... Oh, I just got fucking chills. This is 10. Energy of 3 plus 7. 10. Completion. Ready to come to fruition. Ready. Ready. The 10 is right before the ace in the tarot deck. Bam. Happened. Whether you have someone in your life or not, act as if they are with you. What I just said, prepare. So you will always consider them because they're coming. That's what the universe is saying. Act as if your partnership is coming. So just be there. Be there already. Be in that energy. Or if you're separated from somebody now, you're trying to work through some difficult times with somebody right now. You... If you decide that you're in a relationship with them, you're in the relationship with them. Continue to be their partner, even if they're not around. So even if, listen, even if the equilibrium comes because they finally break, they break up with you, you have fulfilled all your obligations. You have given all that you can. You've done all that you can do. So you don't have to have any regrets. And you set yourself up for some good karma that's about to come to you. So... This is, maybe you're separated from somebody right now. Be with them. Talk about them like you're with them. Be with them. Love them. Love them as much as you ever have until you know that they really don't deserve it. And then walk away with your head held high because karma's about to reward you. Reward you, my pretty little cancers. If you were a great partner, then guess what? You're going to welcome in a great partner. I guarantee you. How can I say this? This is a win-win situation. There is no failure here. Even if there's a breakup, 
there's a relation, a new relationship coming in. That's exactly what it is you, you were supposed to have. Or you were trying to make it happen with this old relationship. It wasn't working. But guess what? You built the karma. You told the universe what you want. You showed them by behaving as it is. Remember, like attracts like. We always get that card for you. Not this week, but we always get that card for you. If you want the perfect partner, be the perfect partner. If somebody still dumps you, them. Them. You set yourself up for the perfect partner because you told the universe through your actions who you, ooh, sorry, who you wanted. Who you wanted. You already set it up. It's already in motion, I'm telling you. It's already in motion. Who, who is coming toward me, Michelle? Who? What are they like? What do they look like? Who are they? Give me some hints. It's all in the extended video below. I'll see you guys over there. Leo. Ooh, what is coming toward you? It's a good question. I know you want to know, so let's get into it. Nothing will come of this. <laughs> Nothing will come of this situation. Void, of course. Eh. Eh, eh, let it go, let it go, let it go. Your love interests, they're not the right one for you. Your husband or wife, okay, they're probably the right one for you. But you better not ask them that question. No, ooh, don't ask if you can get a new car. Don't do it. Don't do it. Abort. Abort. Abort the situation. Do not ask. Do not insist. Don't try to proceed with whatever you've been pushing for because you can feel a little bit off kilter right now. That's what I'm getting from you. Emotionally, you feel a little bit off kilter. You feel totally at a distance from the person that you love. Or just, just like there's a, a big old chasm between the two of you. And that you're off course. The two of you, you're not in sync. Does this mean divorce? No. For some of you, it may. But I don't think it, no, I just think that you can feel it. You can feel that chasm. You can feel a divide. You can feel like something is off. If not just between you, then because of the world at large right now, everything is off. And it's really a throwing you off. It's really affecting you in general. And so it's probably affecting them too. So this could just be, you know what? Give it a month. You got to get through it. You will get through it. Have faith in each other. You'll get through it. But don't push. During void, of course, you things are murky. You know, the, the moon doesn't really know how to feel when it's between signs. That's the problem. Like when, when a moon is void, of course, it, it's, it's changing the signs. It, is, it changes signs every like about 2.5 days. And so when it's between two signs, it like loses the energy of one sign, but doesn't have the full energy of the new sign. And remember, the moon is a luminary. It's reflective. So it's got to have that light or that energy from whatever sign it's in. And if it's between two, it's kind of like... So that's what you're dealing with right now. That energy in your romance, like... You know, like... Go easy. Tread lightly. Don't make any decisions. Any decisions made or paper signed during a void, of course... You don't want to make any decisions or make any fast moves during a void, of course. This is an ease up. Either stop the car, pull over, and sleep for an hour or so. Because that's all really a void, of course, lasts like an hour to four hours, something like that. You know, it depends on the day, but it's like, it's like it only lasts a couple hours. So it's not going to last like the whole day or forever. Don't worry about it. You can get through this. But right now, don't push. Don't try to make any sharp sharp moves. Like I said, like you could feel it. I know you could feel it. Your spouse is sitting there. They're washing the dishes a little too aggressively. Abort. Do not talk to them right now. If you're trying to make something work with somebody, just lay off right now. I think you can feel That's what I'm saying. I think intuitively, you know, there's just something not working here. And it's almost like you could be in the situation where you're just finally re realizing it. Like you're just finally realizing, 
this person is just, I can't, I can't. Like they're not for me or they're not working. We're not working together. There's just, they always, they're too aloof. They're always two steps ahead of me and they won't let me catch up or, or, you know, or, or they won't keep up. And they, I, I'm realizing now it's not just them. It's their choice. It's who they are and what they're choosing and they're not prioritizing me. This is a sense of let, let it go. Like give up on the struggle. Let the struggle go, please. Because it's what you need to do right now is you just need to let this circumstance go. It's the best thing for you. Now, express love through gifts. A small token of love can convey great appreciation. Nine plus one is the energy of 10, something coming to conclusion. This week, uh, I do not, okay, do not ask for their hand in marriage. Do not ask for them to be your boyfriend or girlfriend. Do not present to them this ring that was your grandmother's and your mother's. Do not do it. Not, not this week. There's something that you have to learn. There's something that you need to know. There's something emotional going on. And this gift is almost like, or if somebody is giving you a gift, it's because they're afraid of losing you. They can feel it. They can feel the distance too. And this is sort of like a patch job. Trying to fill something in through gifts that really has to be discussed through a heartfelt conversation and actions. Gifts are not going to cut it this week. They're just not. So don't try. Or if you do try, it's not, I'm telling you, it's not going to make much of a difference. And if you, you're thinking of asking somebody to marry you, not this week, because you're going to get a no or a, I need to think about it. And it's going to rip you up inside. Can you just hold off, please? Just do that for me. Don't, no, no gift giving, you know, because I'm telling you right now, if you do go ahead or if somebody gives you something, you're going to be like, it's not going to matter. It's going to have a lack of pizzazz. It's going to have a lack of meaning. It's, it's going to lack even if it's like a $10 million diamond, it's going to be like, it's a rock. So this is not the climactic period that you're waiting for. It's not that time. It's, it's just, it's not the good time. You know, it's like when it comes to love and romance this week, take a break. Take a break. Definitely don't come on too strong. You know, a smile, maybe a hug kiss on the cheek, that's going to go a long way. You know, a packed lunch before they go out, out the door to work is going to go farther than a, a brand new set of earrings. There, there just need, there's a sense of emotional ambiguity here that needs to be reinforced. That no kind of material thing can really make up for. I just feel like there's something like that it would be a big mistake to try to fill this gap in with diamonds and pearls because that's not what matters. That's not what's needed. There's a, there's a big no here that's going to turn into an even bigger no if you present them with something nice and it's rejected. Why? Why would they say no if you ask them to marry you? Why is the material stuff just not good enough this week? Let's figure it out. That's in the description box below. Who is coming towards you? If you want to know, join me for the extended, Leo. I'll see you guys over there. Virgo. This is all about you. Let's see what's going on with your love life and romance this week. <clears throat> it's time to release negativity, full moon and Scorpio. What's the toxins that are filling up your life? What's the sting? What's the sadness inside of you? Is it something that somebody else put there? Have you had harsh words, accusations, jealousy, envy, fear? 
What's going on inside of you that's sort of intoxicating you in a negative way, in a bad way? Maybe something started out intoxication fun and it became something negative. Too much to drink, too much partying, too much sex, too much drugs, too much rock and roll, too much. And it kept you from loving or from connecting instead of getting you deeper. Or maybe there's just too much sadness, too much grief, too much loss, too much of a sense of what happened before getting in the way of what I have now. This is the time to release all of that. To sort of do a psychological purge of your psyche so that you can love up to your fullest capacity, Virgo. There's something that you have to get out of your way, get off of your chest. There is the scorpion in your garden and it's making you afraid to take steps. So now we got to find it and we got to get the little bugger out, right? We got to get the poison out. We do. We do. What's been going on? What's been happening? What's been, what's been bothering you? Are you afraid? Are you afraid of an actual disease? Is there an actual sickness that you're dealing with right now, Virgo? Or is there actual sickness that you were dealing with? A sense of something that was poisoning your love. Now, it may not be, it could be literally, you know, like, like your love is sick or you're sick. You know, it's, it's life-threatening maybe. Scorpio is the house of, you know, death. But I don't think that's what it's not death. It's it's literally it's 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 literally a fear or something that was harming, doing harm, causing harm. Hold on. So this is it. This is about purging the toxins, getting rid of the fears, the insecurities, the sadness. The past, things from the past, like Pluto is even past life stuff, karmic stuff that keeps coming up over and over again, that is bothering you, bugging you, impeding your ability to be completely right here, right now. What's, what's getting to you? What's upsetting you? What's scaring you? What's worrying you? There is a huge hump and it could, like I said, it could be actual physical toxins, physical sickness, or it could be just emotional, which it really probably is with Scorpio energy. This is, this is with the psyche. This is with the, uh, this is with the, um, eighth house, the house of life and death, right? This, this, uh, this, um, loss, dealing with losses. Sorry, my neck is really bothering me. So I apologize. Dealing with losses, so it probably is something from your past, a hurt, a suffering, a sorrow, something you learned when you lost, could be from your childhood. Whatever it is, this is the time that it has to be let go. It's time to release the negativity. There's something poisoning you that you've got to let go of, Virgo. What is it? Well, let's see. Appreciate this moment. What did I say? This moment, 33 adds up to 6, which is love. Every situation is an opportunity to grow and find love. Have you been looking? Because this is usually looking, talking to somebody through Skype, talking through somebody through the internet, or looking, stalking. Either somebody's stalking you or you're stalking them, and there is a sense of why haven't you let go of that person, that ex? Why haven't you let go of the person you can't think of? Why are you comparing what you had or your fantasies um, and not really super uh, appreciating what you have right here in front of you? There's something like needing to lose yourself in fantasy or, yeah, because what, whatever's happening in front of you is either scaring you, worrying you, or not fulfilling you. But there is a sense of this negativity and it could have to do with the internet, could have to do with looking on profiles. Um, it, like, it could be a famous person. It could be an ex. It could, it's just, it's, it's an energy of stalking, looking at somebody from afar. And I think it's exacerbating how you feel inside. It's exacerbating the negative energy. It's exacerbating your pain and your suffering. It's prolonging it. It's key. It's actually helping it to mature and grow. It's enabling it. 
You could actually be enabling somebody else's sort of negative behavior by, you know, not addressing it or trying to look around it or look over it or pretend like it's not there and not see it. But it is. This could be having to deal with some sort of addiction. Understanding it, realizing it, noticing it, but not knowing how to address it. So sort of like losing yourself in the fantasy to try to like get away from it. But it's so close to the surface, you can't deny it. And yet, for some reason, there's a, a sense of blocking it. Oh, no, 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 no. This could lead to some serious stuff. I'm sorry, hold on. So this is definitely... Not easy stuff that we're dealing with, not easy stuff to talk about, really having to face some truth, really having to face some hard stuff. Hold on. So I don't know if this is you or them that's dealing with these issues right now. Maybe stalking their profile, the person that you're currently with because of trust issues that you've had in the past of not being able to let go of the sensation of you're going to be cheated on. They don't love me as much. They're not as into me. Why don't they have me in their profile pic? I have them in mind, that kind of energy, like that kind of, but it's all based on not what's happening with them, Virgo. It's got to do with what's happening with you and what happened with you. And what is, what is making you feel that way? Where is this negative energy coming from? You have to confront you. This, this has to become a mirror. Instead of your, your sort of looking glass into their life, it has to just be a mirror to you. Like what's, what is, what is happening there? Because it doesn't feel like this is a toxic relationship. It feels like there's something going on inside of you that's intoxicating it or enabling a toxin that is happening with your partner. And not wanting to address it. You see that it's happening, but you don't know how to address it. Well, that's what we're, we're going to figure out. We got to make a plan. Make this week, set it aside to make a plan to address this. Because there, this is something that could be very, very, very deadly to your relationship. Now, what is your partner dealing with? What are they going through? What's happening with them? <laughs> All of that, we're going to figure out. In the link below join me for the extended uh, Virgo I will see you guys over there Libra this is all about your love life um, for this coming week let's see you and your loved ones are safe new moon in cancer Okay, yes, this could be focused on the house, on the house and the home and taking care of people, healing people, working with people, being that, that ever, you know, that like that queen of cups energy, providing, providing, but this is also feeling safe because it's receiving, it's new moon. It's feeling that sense of sanctuary and safety, balance, stability, happiness, domestic happiness, domestic bliss. But why this is this significant? Why did I pause Libra? Because cancer got you. Cancer got your new moon and you got cancer's new moon. So are you dealing with a Cancerian? That's my question because, and yes, I will confirm that in the who is coming towards you portion of this video. That link is below. I hope to see you over there. But this is a sense of this, can, this exchange of energies. Because you're both signs that are almost codependent in that you need to have people's approval you, you, you will do, 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 do for everybody else to make the situation sort of balanced while draining yourself. So, like, I, I just can't get beyond this exchange of energies. Um, this is a sense of focusing Libra on your home. That's what Cancerians do. This is the fourth house energy and they got seventh house energy. You are focused on your home and your family life, taking care of them, uh, making sure you feel good, making sure everybody is safe and protected and defended if need be. Everybody is healthy. This has become, I would say, an obsession for you right now because you feel a need to protect your home. Like that's the great balance, right? Especially with everything that's going on outside. 
The great balance is you can control and impact what goes on inside your house. And it's not becoming like a control freak. It's taking the solace, taking the asylum in your home to at least know everybody that you have around you and that you love is safe. This is also the energy of a mother. So you could be very, very parental right now, very, very maternal and getting a lot of happiness from taking care of others, from defending others, from standing up, uh, for standing up for others, protecting others, making sure everybody else gets the healing and the attention they need. So you could be using your voice to sort of defend people who can't defend themselves like a mother would in a very protective, nurturing way of, oh, my baby needs something, so my baby's going to get something. And I'm going to bitch and moan and rip and claw until they do. That kind of energy of maybe that's what's coming over you in terms of your partner, in terms of protecting them, wanting them. This has something to do with maybe they need protection right now. Maybe they need healing right now. And you having a hand in doing it. Defending them, sticking up for them, standing by them unconditionally. Because this is really unconditional love. Home and hearth and comfort and warmth. And providing that for somebody right now who needs it desperately. You and your loved ones are safe. That being your priority this week. Ask for help. What do you really need? Be willing to accept support. Are you asking for the help that you need? This is very Cancerian energy anyway. This is definitely a water sign, right? Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. Um, sometimes this is my May-December relationship, somebody dealing with somebody who's much older than you or like needing, ask, have you been asking for help or have you been allowing yourself to be drained, Libra? Have you been giving, giving, giving and insuring, insuring, insuring? And have you, but have you stopped to take time to actually ask for help that you need? Because it seems like people are asking you for help. You want to be the one to help people. It's almost like you, th this is you, the, the uh, Poseidon guy. The King Triton guy, you know, like Ariel and King Triton. You want to guard, you want to correct, like protect. It's like very parental, very parental energy. So in some cases, you could be finding out that you are pregnant, Libra, if you know you can get pregnant or you and your spouse. This is a sense of parental energy and nesting, taking over you big time, wanting to be the one that people turn to for advice. Taking, taking solace in being the, being the one that your spouse comes to for advice. Wanting to be the one that like holds them until they fall asleep or pats them on their back. Like feeling somehow really comfortable and domestic right now. This could be your first years as a newlywed. This could be you two just moved in together. This could be the energy of just being really happy in quarantine. Being able to be with the person that you love and or the people that you love and getting a lot of happiness from sharing that time with them. Because Cancers, this would be the, the Cancerian's perfect situation. But definitely Libra, this is a sense of letting somebody know how much you care by being there for them. Like that's how, that's how you would be showing your concern right now is there is, your partner is going through something and they need advice. They need concern. They need care. They need maybe to be healed, maybe to be helped, uh, maybe to be guided. They're struggling with something and you're the ear that they need to listen to. You're the level head. You're the one that could, you know, balance things out for them, figure out how to make things work for them. This is you sort of taking over in your prime, being able to help uh, through finding that balance for them. Now, what are they experiencing? What are they going through? Why do they need you so badly? All of that information will get in who is coming towards you, what they're going through, what they're about. This is a sense of Cancerian. Now, this person, this if they are a Cancerian, this person will um, find it very difficult to, need, to ask for help. They'll be very emotionally needy. But to ask for like help in the 3D or help in general, it, it will be difficult for them. So maybe why this is why it's such a breakthrough for you, why you're so happy that they're finally able to do it. This is a this is a milestone because they've actually been able to make themselves vulnerable in front of you. 
And that's how you know that they trust you and that your relationship is budding and growing and healthy because they can finally trust you. Finding somebody that you really want to take care of. Really interesting energy. I want to dive deeper into your the connection of this, perhaps this exchange of energies with Cancerians. That's really, it's just intriguing to me right now. Um, Libra, I do hope that you will come over to the who's coming towards you because we're going to dive deeper. Confirm what sign you're dealing with, though it's got cancer written all over it. Maybe Pisces. Pisces is a little mermaid. That's what they are. It's not so much Scorpio. This is somebody a lot more tender. This, I just feel like it's big time cancer. Let's see. Let's confirm. Not just their sign, though, like their psyche, what's happening in their head. That link is below. Libra, I'll see you guys over there. Thank you so much. If you've watched this whole video, I'm so grateful. I'm really, I can't express it enough. Thank you so much for hanging with me for an hour and 20 minutes. It's been huge and I'm grateful. Um, please do uh, go over to the extended because there's lots of extra information over there. Um, a deeper read and uh, additional context. And um, I think it will help a lot. There's a lot of, I think, questions still hanging in the air. So uh, let's get over there. Let's get into it. I'll see you guys over there.